Pittsburgh Steelers walk out of the preseason undefeated, defeating the Detroit Lions 19-9 to in a game that, quite frankly, seemed rather boring, but plenty came out of it. We're going to start with the winners. Steven, when you watched this game, who really stood out to you? Who impressed? Yeah, I loved watching Mark Robinson play today. Um, the guy flies around. If nothing else, he can hit, um, and that's you know fun for me to watch when I'm just sitting up there in the press box, but... I think he did earn himself um, a much better chance of making the 53-man roster, um, made some tight plays on special teams, um, just disruptive in, in that area. Um, he had a, a big hit on a kickoff return, and then on the next kickoff return, forced a holding call. So I really liked watching Mark Robinson play today. Yeah, I'm going to stick with the inside linebacker. I'm going to go Devin Bush. I thought Devin Bush came in here impressed, which he needed to do all preseason, but finally did it here in the last exhibition game. Um, his tackle on fourth and one was great. It kind of showed, okay, I have that spark. I could make the plays that the Steelers have hoped that he can make for the last four years. So it was definitely a big win for Devin Bush tonight. And I think it solidified his role as the inside linebacker one next to Miles Jack. Let's talk about who did not impress. I think we both have a clear-cut answer here, but when you watch this game, who, who, who disappointed you? Yeah, you could kind of turn to the entire offensive line. Um, you know, we've been beating this horse. This horse has been long dead, but, you know, like it, it it keeps rearing its head, and you keep seeing the same stuff in this offensive line who said this past week that the mistakes were correctable, that, that they had the talent and the necessary players in their room to, to fix the issues and to get better, but it just hasn't shown up on film or in games, and at this point you don't know where the solution is. Yeah, I, I don't think that you – have an option to replace guys like Dan Moore who isn't a capable starter right now Kendrick Green doesn't even look like a backup I, I think Kendrick Green as crazy as it sounds if he was a sixth or a seventh round pick at this point I don't think he makes this roster of course he's a third round pick he's probably going to make the roster but I think you have to give J.C. Hassenauer or John LeGlue a backup chance behind Kevin Dotson the rest of the offensive line very hit or miss, but I, I think right now the Steelers' offensive line and the expectations for them should be just like they were last season. Very low, probably going to disappoint you even for how low they are, and until you make a fix, nothing's going to change, and I don't know if they have a fix. Now, when it comes to the position battles, there was, there was a lot of them coming into this game, and the final preseason game determines pretty much everything. Let's start with the quarterback. Walking out of here or walking in here, I felt like it was still Mitch Trubisky's job to lose. Walking out of here, do you feel that's the the same heading towards Tuesday? Yeah, I, I do think so. Um, you know, I think Mitch, you know, he's he's played perfectly well. This was not his best preseason game, I felt like, um, but it was still you know a perfectly competent game. He got a chance to run the two minute offense against a live defense, finish it off with a touchdown. Um, even after losing Deontay Johnson to an injury, um, he made some nice throws, um, even under duress from the offensive line, which which we mentioned before was a little bit shaky today. So I still, I'd agree, I think it's still Mitch's job to lose. Yeah, I think that Mitch Trubisky has won the QB1 job heading into week one. I wouldn't be surprised if Kenny Pickett is named the starter. It wouldn't shock me, but I think that right now they believe Mitch is the starter and they're going to work towards developing this offense around him much like they've done all summer long the backup running back is probably the second highest position battle on this team Jalen Warren has sparked a lot of interest he took RB2 snaps with the first team do you think he has won that job and has locked in a roster spot heading into the final 53 yeah um, I, I think he has if not for the way that he's carried the ball. I think for the way that he's played special teams, um, the way he pass protected today. He had an outstanding chip block um, in the first half. He put put a Lions rusher on his ass, or on his back, excuse me. Um, uh, but yeah, Jalen's done a, a lot of stuff really well. He's just been steady, and every day you know what you're going to get from Jalen Warren. I think he's done more than enough to earn a spot. Yeah, I think Warren's, Warren's the guy. Do you think that they keep all four and possibly get rid of Derek Watt? Yeah, I think that's that's completely possible. I could definitely see that happening. Um, Derek just hasn't played this preseason. You know, yep. he's been hurt the whole time. Like, you can't evaluate a guy. You can't have a competition when one guy's not playing. Um, so I think they'd feel more than comfortable 
leaving Derek out, um, using Connor Hayward, Hayward maybe in that fullback role. We saw him do that a little bit today. Um, they seem pretty, pretty, uh, pretty comfortable with him in that spot. So Derek, you know, maybe he's a little bit superfluous, I guess you could say. Yeah, I would say that Derek is probably on his way out. Connor Hayward playing fullback kind of solidified that for me, made me see, okay, well, they have a plan to replace Derek Watt. There's no need for him here anymore. On top of that, there's a lot of guys making special teams plays, and I think that's significant because that was Derek Watt's big argument. Oh, you're so good at special teams. Well, if you have a dozen guys making special teams plays, you don't really need another one. Final one here, the sixth wide receiver spot. I think coming into this game, it came down to Miles Boykin, Steven Sims, and then an outlier shot for Tyler Vons. That last spot, assuming Calvin Austin is healthy and does make this roster not on IR, who do you think it goes to? Yeah, I would I would love to say Steven Sims. I think he gives you a lot. I think uh, as a special teamer, you know, as a return man, um, but they have people who can do that, and Miles Boykin has done enough, I think, as a receiver um, and a special teamer to, to maybe earn that spot a little bit more. Um, he's more experienced than Sims. He's He's got some some real time uh, in in NFL rotations when it's from his time with the Ravens, and I think he had a really good game today. So I'd I'd have to say I'm, uh, I think it leans towards Boykin in that scenario. Yeah, uh, the way I look at this is Miles Boykin came into training camp, had a rough two days, has since turned it around 180, and has not turned back. That's enough to lock him in for that final spot. Stephen Sims was fighting an uphill battle this whole time. I wouldn't again. I wouldn't be surprised if Sims is that last guy. But Boykin is a dude who plays Gunner well, has special teams ability elsewhere. Danny Smith really enjoys him on the field. Plus, he's making te- our plays on offense. I just think it's a no-brainer to keep a guy that, that that's that reliable. Absolutely.